Welcome to part 13 of refurbishing a vintage model steamboat. I'm going to cover this reversing mechanism that I made and also fitting the pressure gauge and one or two other things near the end. This is a simple lever which operates the reversing gear on the steam engine, but I needed to make a suitable mounting to place the lever at exactly the right height. The lever that operates the reversing gear needs to drop below the level of the bar and also above it. So I came up with this simple device. I didn't bother covering it in the video how to make it because it's fairly self-explanatory. It's a piece of brass angle and two pieces of square brass, silver soldered to the brass angle and then threaded to take these two bolts that hold the assembly together. At this stage you must be thinking, well why is he dismantling it? It was already made. Well the reason for dismantling it is because I never put the part in my acid bath mainly because my acid bath was occupied at the time I made this component. The reason that I left the component out of the acid bath was to purposely show what happens if you don't use an acid bath. And I wanted to show what happens if you leave silver solar flux on a piece of brass for a long period. It corrodes very quickly and quite badly. Very nasty, very corroded and very messy and certainly not suitable for painting over. So by putting the component in my acid bath I will be able to remove all of the flux before I paint it. Over now to mounting the pressure gauge. I'm just taking it out of the packet and as you can see it comes complete with a very small union and this small tubular part of the union goes down inside the pipe. It's designed for 532 pipe. This pipe is slightly too big and it's quite difficult to silver solder this small union fitting into the pipe without getting silver solder on the union nut itself. What I want to do is make the union nut part of the pipe. So what I'm doing is temporarily assembling the union fitting to the pressure gauge and then with a felt tip pen marking one of the surfaces. This will become the top surface as shown here. And when it's all finished the pressure gauge will screw into the union and it will be a very rigid fitting. I didn't want to use the original small shaft of the union fitting because it may snap off. I've actually had this happen on several occasions on steam locomotives. And here is a general arrangement. You'll notice you can see the pressure gauge from above the boat by looking into the hatch. By making a one piece removable hatch, which can be used for static display but removed when sailing the boat, it's very easy to see both the pressure and the water level in the boiler without having to remove any of the superstructure to see this. At the moment you can see me cleaning some of the components. This is a very simple job but you have to be very careful. I'm using a vacuum cleaner and a paintbrush. Two points to watch here. Don't be too heavy handed with the paintbrush. You don't want to break parts off the superstructure and make sure there are no loose parts on the superstructure that will go up the vacuum cleaner. While we're talking about parts on the superstructure, have a quick look at this winch. This really is a nice thing. If you rotate the winch, the pistons go in and out at each side. It really is an excellent piece of equipment. And when the boat is fully assembled, with a wealth of scale fittings like this, as you will see later on in the build, it makes for a very nice model indeed. And once again you can see me being very careful with the paintbrush, being very careful not to damage any parts of this winch. As always this is a sympathetic restoration and I'm not going to be repainting the winch, so it needs to look good in its original form. Although you can't see it clearly on this clip, some of the grey paint is damaged, so I will be doing a little bit of painting in that area. Moving on to the bow of the boat, these handrail stanchions are very fragile so I'm being very careful. The handrail stanchions on the bow are okay, I've had to stick a couple of them back together, but around the stern it's another story. Nearly all the handrail stanchions are damaged, so I'm going to replace those entirely. In this bow section of the boat, there is another winch which also moves if you rotate the shaft. From a health and safety point of view, it's a good idea to wear a mask when doing this job. I'm using a vacuum cleaner which stops a lot of the dust floating about into the atmosphere. On an old model such as this one, which has been laid around somewhere for a lot of years, you don't know what the dust is. These are the original pieces of wood that covered the hatch in the front part of the superstructure, and I'm going to reuse them. I've cleaned off all the old glue with my linisher, and it's now time to stick them all to a piece of mahogany. It would be a real pain to have to put the individual planks into the hatch, so I'm making it so it's a one-piece removable hatch that looks like many pieces. 
I've used quite a thick piece of mahogany for the base because I do not want this hatch to warp. This clip is showing the individual pieces being stuck to the mahogany and the grain on the mahogany base goes one way and the grain on the planks runs the other way. This cross grain lamination of the planks on the mahogany gives added strength to the structure so it shouldn't warp at all. Plus, in a moment I'm going to varnish it on both sides. If you think about it, after the sailing there's going to be some water in the bottom of the boat, so if the boat's placed back on the sideboard and this hatch is put in place, there's going to be quite a lot of condensation inside the boat. Of course it's best to leave the hatch off until the boat's dried, but this doesn't always happen, so I'm going to make sure that the wooden parts are thoroughly waterproofed. There are going to be some wooden parts inside the boat, the servo mountings and this hatch and any wooden parts will be given a coat of varnish on both sides. While I'm waiting for the cyanoacrylate adhesive on the hatch cover to cure, it's time to look at the paintwork. As this is a very old model boat, the paintwork has suffered slightly over the years. It's not too bad, I've seen a lot worse than this, so I'm doing a little bit of repair. A bit of a tip here, if you're repairing paintwork like this, which was originally probably Humbrol Gloss Black, use Humbrol Satin Black, because the original paint will have gone a little bit more satin with age. So by using satin black you're somewhere near. The last thing you want is a massive shiny patch where you've touched in the paintwork. Returning now to the hatch cover, I put the arrow on to show which way is forward because the hatch is not quite square. With the wooden hatch in place it really does look the part, especially as I reused the original wood, and the difference in coloration of some of the planking makes it look even better. I always like to do this on restorations because it's part of the history of the model. All that remains to be done now is the waterproofing process and to do this I'm using some polyurethane varnish rubbed in with a cloth and then wiped off. That's it for this episode and as usual thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.